Welcome to Striker of Enyo and this this is that Stacy's mom over there? Shit! Damn, she she's looking kinda hot. Anyway, this is Striker of Enyo. This is Mom, why are you rolling around on the floor laughing? It's, it's just so funny! So I <laughs> really appreciate the fact that uh, you are a mom and you apparently are letting your teenage boy or a girl, not sure what it was, um, not only watch my show, but you're also watching my show so that you can get the reference for Stacy's mom. Uh, but yeah, so this is this is the big one. That's what she said. Uh, not Stacy's mom. Uh, but this is episode 300. This is the top 20 games we want to see in VR on consoles so yeah there's not really a whole lot of rules and there's not a whole lot of guidelines we're just gonna jump right into this thing and that's why we're taking a serious look at a list of games that we want to see in vr oh 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 god those are nice can can you be my new mommy no go away go 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 i just <sighs> The grandma in a bikini, grandma in a bikini. Calm down, come on. Actually, that doesn't really work for me because my grandma went to a beauty college and you know what, I've seen some pictures of her and she was kind of hot back in the day. But anyway, so no, it's not. we're not picking games that are easy to have in VR. Although Metal Gear Solid 5 might be kind of good, I wanted to actually think about each entry and try to figure out what games might actually be kind of fun in a VR experience. I mean, existing games, of course, but also even just some basic concepts that would be kind of fun to finally see rendered in VR. Not just have every top-of-the-line first-person shooter converted into a VR version, because... Well, that would be easy. So, yep, here's your list. Games you want to see in VR on console. Number 20. Here we go. Cluster Truck. Right about now, you're probably thinking, Striker... Damn it, I thought this was going to be a good list. I'm going to back out, unsubscribe from you, dislike the video, and now my goal in life will be to destroy you and make you leave YouTube. Wait, wait, come on. I mean, just give me a sec. I mean, wouldn't this game be kind of fun in VR? I mean, jumping from truck to truck, trying to get to the end goal. The environments are specifically designed to take out as many of these AI-controlled trucks as possible, making the route to your goal kind of fun every time you play it. Sure, there's not a whole lot of content to it. There's a number of levels, but they eventually end. There's some power-ups that are kind of cool and whatnot. Is that a truck off to the right side of the screen? Holy, how'd that guy get over there? But there's just an unpredictability that I think would be really cool playing this game in VR. And you got to admit, um, you might need some seasickness pills of some kind. Uh, or if you get motion sickness real easy, you're probably only going to want to play 10 minutes at a time. Uh, well, the rest of us are probably going to only want to play for 15 minutes at a time. But yeah, I think it would be kind of fun to sit down and play a game like this. And for many people, you know, to be one of their first VR experiences to kind of see what the whole idea of playing in VR is kind of like. You know, lots of sudden movement, you know, being uh, turned end over end. And I just think it'd be kind of fun. So yeah, please give us support. Uh, conversion, an update, something that would allow us to play this game in VR uh, on consoles, of course, because that's what this list is all about. Number 19. And we're going to be vague. Just a warning. warning. So I've always oh, wanted to see an RTS so game, possibly in VR. I know it's kind of hard because, especially on consoles, consoles really aren't known for their ports to RTS games. But I really think a real-time strategy game, and also perhaps a turn-based one along the lines of Civilization, I think it really could be kind of cool to be able to see and witness in VR. Now this is actually footage from Supreme Commander number two on the consoles and dear god it is butt ugly. I got to admit that. But I actually played quite a bit of multiplayer in Supreme Commander one and two uh, bringing in those big uh, saucer ships and crashing down on my enemies. That was pretty fun even though they probably weren't really meant to initially bring down but when they would come down they would take out a lot of units 
so I would park them above my buddy's base, and uh, once he killed it, yeah, they they would leave a path of destruction. But just imagining, you know, looking down at a play field, uh, kind of like a tabletop RPG, but it's actually interactive. I mean, you can see the units, you know, as they're attacking each other. You can see what needs to be done. You can see where you need to put more units, and you can do it all, you know, at a at a button press or by pointing your hand and engaging the enemy. And I didn't just say the word engage because it showed up on screen. I literally was supposed to say the word engage. So I'm cool. But yeah, I really think an RTS would be kind of interesting, but it's really hard of a sale nowadays to even make an RTS game for the consoles, mostly because, well, Command and Conquer, those guys aren't even around anymore. And Maxis, well, they're not making games anymore either. They got absolved. So, yeah, it's kind of hard to picture what company is going to bring RTSs back, much less an RTS in VR form. But hey, it could be a short demo-like experience. Number 18. Vague again. What in the world could be better than a frickin' Tron game in VR? I mean, seriously, this would be quite possibly one of the coolest things to do in VR. I mean, it's literally in a virtual world to begin with. And you've already got the art style that came from the newest movie. So you basically have a way to start with your designs and how things function and whatnot. So it's not like you're having to create everything from scratch. You know, the suits, the cycles, all that stuff has already been designed thanks to the movie and whatnot. And I really think a Tron VR experience, you know, using the discs, riding the light cycles, taking out foes and watching them disintegrate into you know, thousands of pixels. I think it would be a really cool experience, a really cool world. And the story, you know, essentially would be trying to leave the game world. Yeah, I know I kind of spoiled it by showing you footage of Tron Evolution, or at least showing you the title screen. But I mean, seriously, the only thing really hindering this thing is the fact that Disney kind of owns the Tron license and they're not too happy with the way the last movie turned out. I mean, I'm sorry, on a technical level, it was really cool, but I just didn't engage with any of those characters. But if they pull a Guardians of the Galaxy and wow us with a new movie, who knows? A new Tron VR game could be in the works, and I think we should get one anyway. But yeah, make it. Make it fun. Number 17. So, Chivalry Medieval Warfare. It's been around on PC for... A little while and we finally got a taste of it on consoles and quite honestly I wanted to put this game up higher but in replaying the game it's almost more of a novelty of just being in medieval times and being able to cut people's heads off the game itself I mean it looks cool there's a lot of attention to detail uh, there's a lot of different loadouts and whatnot. You can be different characters or different... Well, you can be different loadouts either way. You know, knights, vanguards, archers, and, and whatnot. So it all looks really cool. It's really fun getting in there and hacking away at, at other enemies. But this is a multiplayer-only game, essentially. So as fun as it is hacking dudes in first-person... Uh, the problem with this game right now is the fact that you can really only find a match in free-to-play at the moment. And that's hopefully... Th Damn, I just lost my head. And hopefully that's thanks to the European servers. Oh yeah, all the servers are separated, so if you want to try to find a game, you gotta search through the East Coast, then the West Coast, then Central, then Australia. It's just dumb. But I really think the novelty of uh, having a medieval warfare game in VR, that would be pretty cool. Number 16. It's a good one, too. Oh, yeah. Look at the three of us living a life of crime. <sighs> what <are you> <laughs> yeah, so I really want to see Telltale do a VR first-person adventure game. Yeah, I know. Sorry for having another vague uh, entry here where I can't give you a specific example, but I really feel like that's the point of VR. It's... Uh, 
you know, at first give some experiences that have already been experienced, but put them in VR. And then for at least the first five slots or so of my list, I wanted to really try to think out of the box and think of games that may or may not work really well in 3D that really haven't been done much before. And I really think that with Telltale, as their games get better and better, and their storytelling gets even more uh, emotional and poignant, I really think that they are the best examples of creating something kind of like Walking Dead Michonne, which is more like a three to four hour experience, but have it in VR from the point of view of a character. That main character can be, you know, different races, different sexes, and uh, I think it would really work. It would be pretty unique. You know, you experience what's going on around you as the character. I think that could be very powerful and really... Number 15. An actual game, yeah. Metro. Last Light. Redux. Now this game is... Wait. wait what? It's Redo? But there's an X in it. It's French, you freak! Oh. Okay, so Last Light, uh, there really is no better tailor-made, story-driven, first-person shooter experience than Metro. And quite honestly, they really outdid themselves oh, with right. the sequel, Last Light. For the creature. It only sinks back this far on my list because it is a bit older of a game, and if you've already experienced it, well, then you've already experienced it. Obviously, experiencing it in VR for the first time would be really cool. There's just something about having a gas mask on in certain spots, having to actually wipe your face clean of dirt and debris that falls on the mask, having to change out filters when you're above ground in this uh, radiated kind of world. And quite honestly, the story itself is kind of interesting. I mean, it's so interesting, I actually found myself listening to the text that was being read uh, during the loading screens. So yeah, it's actually really well done, and it's not just all shooty-shooty mechanics. And you don't necessarily have a whole lot of enemies on screen at uh, the same time, or at least a lot of times you have help, so you don't necessarily always feel alone in this game. It's really well done, it's very detailed. This is a perfect game to port into VR, if you have not played it before. And even just experiencing the game again, I mean, everything is really done from the point of view of our main hero. So it really feels very engaging, like you're actually in the game. Uh, Kind of in the sense of a game like Half-Life 2 might do it, but I really think the visuals and the storytelling here are, It's really a level above in some regards of what Half-Life does, but it's also kind of a nice wink and a nod But yeah, this is a game you have to experience it and if you can experience it in VR that would be even better Number 14 Thief, the 2014 version. Now this game was developed by Eidos Montreal, the same ones behind the reinvigoration of the Deus Ex franchise and Tomb Raider as well, on both cases. And you know what? I can't think of really too much more of a better sneaking around game than Thief. You often see the hands of your player that's interacting with the objects. Um, there's some head movements with the camera, like every time you pick up an object, that eh, they might take that out, but quite honestly, it's really fun sneaking around in a game like this that actually has surprisingly good AI. And I mean, it's it's really all about stealth and not being seen swooping around using the bow, uh, using your blackjack to take out enemies. It's all really fun and it controls really well. And I would imagine that also in VR, as with the main game, you can really customize this thing to your liking. If you want to have a bunch of prompts telling you where the objective is and where to go, you can do that. If you want to use the, uh, the vision that basically highlights nearly everything that's interactable, you can. But if you want to take that all away and just be immersed in a game like this, you can do that as well, and it really is a beautiful looking game considering it's it's been a few years. 
So I really think a game like this would be great to have on consoles in VR. I don't necessarily know if, uh, well, another company could always take the reins of porting it over to something like that. But yeah, it's incredibly fun game. I can't imagine not that's the wrong stupid thing to shoot with the rope arrow. Uh, you see what I mean? But you could be doing this all in VR yourself and figuring it out on your own. But this really is the perfect game for stealth and sneaking around and not getting caught, not having to do combat and whatnot. I mean, it's just, it's really built. I mean, when you look down, you actually see your character's legs. There's not many first-person games that even do that. So they definitely make it feel like the player is in the shoes of this character. And I really can't think of that much better of a game that would really work well in VR than this for stealth. Number 13. Oh, uh, it's unlucky. Look out. Rage. Striker, what the hell is this game? I've never heard of it. Well, it was actually developed and published by id Software, the seminal video game that nearly created first person shooters by itself. It also, unfortunately, was one of the last games worked on by John Carmack before he left the, uh, before he left id Software. And yeah, you know what? It's still surprising that I find people still call it ID Software to this date, even though there's been lots of behind the scenes footage and game clips and lots of other stuff. I mean, did people just not go to college or not take any classes? In high school, I mean, it's the id, the ego, I mean, uh, well, whatever. But yeah, so this is a game that I really felt like it never really got the attention or the sales that it deserved. And it has very positive reviews. And quite honestly, the technology behind it is just about everyone makes it one of the best looking uh, Generation 7 video games, which is on 360 and PlayStation 3. It apparently uses something called Mega Textures, which instead of having hundreds, if not thousands, of smaller textures that make up your environment, in this case, it's actually just one big giant texture, which makes everything run incredibly smooth. The combat is fluid, the driving works really well. Um, it's just an environment that you really feel like it's alive. And even though when you go up close, the textures, you know, they, they're kind of blurry. But this really does feel like a game that you want to walk around and live in, in VR. It looks gorgeous. Uh, interacting with characters is always fun. And like I said, the combat is done really well, even though I'm not showcasing that at the moment. But, uh, but yeah, it just well, feels like a really well a done and lived in over. environment. And I think if John Carmack can, can get around the whole thing of being sued and whatnot, bringing him in on a VR version for consoles of this on the eighth generation consoles, the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, I really think this would be something special and worth experiencing the game. Number 12. Mad Max. Yeah, I kind of have a, a thing for this game. If, if you've seen my channel, I got a lot of footage from it. But no, I really think it's a great and fun game. And I can't stop imagining what it would be like in VR. But Striker, the game's not even the first person, you son of a... Look, look, little Billy, just, just let me talk for a minute. I know it's not in first person, but I think having an above camera view, kind of like what you're looking at now, you know, looking down on Max while you're controlling him, going in the environment or driving the car, I think it would be kind of cool. I know there's kind of a disconnect when you feasibly are controlling a character and you can look in the opposite direction of where that character is. I know I kind of get that, and maybe the camera should be kind of tied to what the player is looking at, kind of like what you see as I'm playing it now. Maybe the camera should always be facing in one direction, and you just kind of sit there and play the game. But you can always freely look around, you know, at objects and whatnot. But I really think that, you know, some kind of truncated camera system uh, to be able to work in VR. I think a game like this would work really well because especially on PC, Mad Max really does run smoothly and there's really not too much issue that people have had with this game. It looks gorgeous. 
Uh, it runs beautifully. The frame rate is often very solid. And, you know, aside from there just not being enough in the way of hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat and there's not really a whole lot of car parts that really make a difference or, you know, if, if you played the game, you understand what I'm saying. Even though there are limitations like that, I really think it would just be a gorgeous game to look and run in VR the way it is. And it might not bring too much more new to the table to be able to play it in VR, but... I think it'd work really well. It's a beautiful looking game. Number 11. Here it comes. The Bioshock Collection. So I was really debating on which Bioshock game I was gonna put on this list. I was thinking, well, you know, the new one is, well, it's new, right? So why not put it there but i mean people really do have a massive fondness for the original bioshock and then i thought well they gave us the remasters in a bioshock collection so why not just make a bioshock collection vr i mean we're the only addition really to the whole package is making it work in vr and for all three games i really can't think of a better way to experience Bioshock for the first time uh, than to not only start from the very beginning but to experience it in VR. I mean for the most part the story is told from a first person perspective and you really don't leave the viewpoint of the main character for the most part through all the games so I think this would be tailored pretty good. You might not be able to see the full arms attached to uh, the shoulders and whatnot, as typical with VR games. But I mean, seriously, starting with the original Bioshock, I think it would be quite thrilling and probably definitely worth a playthrough for experiencing for the first time, not only remastered, but also in VR, where you literally are in the world. And then to go through Bioshock 2, and then, of course, into the third and final Bioshock game, Skyhook and all, with all of its glory and virtually some of the best, <laughs> I said virtually, virtually some of the best visuals on consoles, uh, quite honestly, or at least the last generation when the Bioshock games were made, right? So, yeah, I can't think of a better way to experience uh, not only Rapture, but the whole Bioshock series by being able to play through all three of them on consoles. I don't believe any PC uh, port or mod has ever been made in order to bring this into VR on the PC. So this definitely would be something worth experiencing and worth playing especially for those that have never dived into or flown to Rapture in any kind of way. The Bioshock Collection would definitely be worth it. Number 10! Cities Skylines and in this case, it's the Xbox One edition. But yeah, we're talking about the console version, of course. So City Skylines, seriously, one of the most addictive and fun city building simulator like games because, well, SimCity on consoles really hasn't been a thing in a very, very long time. And we probably didn't want to have the latest one anyway. But imagine this game building and constructing your own city, designing everything, but you're actually looking at it from the point of VR, where you're actually looking down on the city or you're walking the city streets, essentially with the camera. And you know, you're looking at everything. I really think that having a game like this in VR would be really cool to be able to see and look at different points of your city. I'm not exactly sure how well it would work in VR since typically in video games, you know, what the player is looking at is what gets rendered. So being able to move your head around really fast, I don't know how well it would be it would be able to actually run this game. But seriously, if there was going to be a game 
that would let you play it in VR. I would absolutely love this. It would probably be a little weird, obviously, having all those menus hanging in front of you, but just being able to zoom in and out to make roads, to watch the trains and the traffic go by, to take out buildings and inspect your traffic. I really think being able to look at it all from a bird's eye view would be incredibly cool on consoles. And uh, sure, why not make a version of it for PC as well? But yeah, I really think that uh, using a head-mounted display in a game like this would be pretty fun. And trying to manage your city, uh, trying to figure out what's wrong with it, it, it really would give you a much more expansive uh, visual in order to look at problems. And, you know, being able to go down to street level would just be kind of a cool experience. But yeah, so how about we get something like this on perhaps one of the more powerful versions of the eighth generation consoles? And, you know, yeah, let's do some VR and, and have some fun building some cities and micromanaging every single aspect from it. Seriously, I can't think of a better game like this. Number nine, also known as the space exploration slot. So for the number nine slot, I actually have two games. Uh, the first one is Elite Dangerous. Now on PC, this actually already does have a VR support. I can't remember if it's a uh, fan made or if it's official or not, but quite honestly, this game has been pretty interesting to play on consoles. And I think a VR version uh, supported on consoles would actually be pretty cool. This really has started to become one of the premier space combat, space exploration flight games uh, on consoles in recent years. Uh, obviously it started on PC first, and even though us console gamers don't quite get the drop dead gorgeous visuals that you see on the PC, and even though the game isn't necessarily as exciting to play as some of the trailers make it seem to be, I think I can't, I mean, I really can't think of a better way to relax after a long day of doing the nine to five grind than sitting down, putting on a VR headset and just getting absolutely lost in space in a game with this type of gameplay. I mean, it's just unprecedented on how much depth and little details that are, go into this game and sure, we all really kind of want something like Star Citizen, right? I mean, that's that's the creme de la creme or whatever you want to call it. But we all know that that's a game that's going to be on PC and I don't even know if it's possible to do on consoles. So, you know, we got to take what we can get. But seriously, this game, the developers have been adding content after content patch being able to land and actually explore on the ground to, of certain planets, they've added quite a lot of content. And I can't think, like I said, of a better space game than to explore than this one. Except for this game, No Man's Sky. Yeah, that's right, I put it on this list. But quite honestly, with the two updates that we've already seen for this game, Foundation and uh, Pathfinder, with a third one already kind of being announced, No Man's Sky has actually turned out to have a quite a content-rich uh, world to it. There's been a lot of improvements. You've got a home base now that you can alter. There's a free mode where you can basically uh, build things on, with unlimited funds and kind of see how you want to put things when you actually get there in the real game. And there's even a harder mode that is going to challenge the crap out of you. So seriously, No Man's Sky, um, especially seven months after its original release, has a lot more content and a lot more promise than when the game originally released. But yeah, there's still adding stuff to this. And with the third update, we're probably going to have even more stuff. So, I mean, sure, the visuals not, might not necessarily be as drop-dead gorgeous as with Elite Dangerous, but the reason you're playing this is a bit more exploration 
not necessarily so much shooting, but I mean, seriously, I mean, this game, it does really look pretty good, and I can't imagine a better space adventure or fantasy type game to play in VR than this. So I decided to put both of these games in the same slot. So seriously, if you like more simulation-based stuff with a bit more depth, Elite Dangerous might be your game, but if you like to just jump into a game and experience it and explore, No Man's Sky is really going to be your game too. You can't go wrong with either one. Number 8, featuring Mech Combat. Hawken, the free-to-play game, and Titanfall 2 with a campaign and multiplayer. Hawken is a unique beast when it comes to console players who haven't really necessarily embraced this free-to-play, multiplayer-only mech combat game, at least not as much as the PC players have. But then again, PC players have enjoyed regular updates, and they've had the game for a number of years. But console gamers did eventually get a version of Hawken, and it really is fast, frantic, and very fun mech combat game with a number of different mechs and upgrades and weapons and skill trees and all sorts of just overall mech combat goodness. If Mech Warrior Online was available on consoles, then that would probably have snuck into this spot instead. But for free to play, a VR version of Hawken would be much appreciated. Stand by for Titanfall. And then there's Titanfall 2, which also shares the same slot as Hawken. But seriously, what could be better than running around in VR with a grappling hook only to jump inside a mech and then be surrounded on all four sides with TV screens and being fully enclosed inside a metal killing machine. And it's also a newer game, so it has new content coming out. And its DLC is all gonna be free, which means the player base isn't gonna be split up. So while Hawken still can be fast and frenetic, and it really focuses on just mech-on-mech -mech combat, Titanfall 2 has the ability to draw even more players in because of its namesake, it's fast and frenetic action as well, but you also have dumb AI that will help players kind of get accustomed to moving around in VR. Sure, some things may need to be redesigned for playing strictly in VR, but that shouldn't really hamper the experience. It'll be an absolute blast and fun to play game Although it might induce some motion sickness because of using the grappling hook when you're on foot and dashing and jumping around and wall sprinting. Yeah, some people that might get kind of disorientating and sick for them, but hey, I still want VR. Number seven, also known as the walking simulator slot. Yay! Gone Home, and I also want to split this one over with uh, What Remains of Edith Finch, a somewhat newer game that has come out that really would benefit from having a VR console version as well. So I actually pick both games because, I mean, Gone Home is definitely one of the more well-known walking simulators, but Edith Finch does some unique stuff without spoiling or giving away anything what the story is about but being able to play that thing in VR would be incredibly cool. I just haven't bought the game yet, but from some of the video footage that I've seen, seriously, both of these games would work really well. And why not? Walking simulators are known for being relatively short. I mean, Gone Home, you can beat in under two hours, I believe. I mean, you can speed run the thing in a minute if you know what you're doing, but a walking simulator is kind of conducive to what VR would all be about. Oh there's nothing to interact Kitty. with aside from, well, I mean, there's no enemies to fight. All you're doing is just interacting with scraps of paper, journals, notebook entries, uh, spreadsheets. I mean, and what would be cooler than to be walking around a house, she turning on lights and trying to figure out a mystery of some kind. Anything but me. 
you know, just simply opening doors and picking up objects and whatnot, all of that in VR would actually be a bit more cooler than it would be than just playing with a regular controller in your hands. Turning over objects, looking at the table of contents, or you know, going through a book or whatnot, or having that scrap of paper that's actually, you know, hanging in front of you, and uh, being able to turn it over and see if there's a hidden message on the back. All this kind of stuff would work really well, and that baby is way too happy to be on toilet paper. Or actually, he's a little too surprised. He's like, I'm happy, but I don't know where I'm at. So yeah, I think a walking simulator, especially like Gone Home, one of the prime examples, and the newer Edith Finch would both work very well in VR, and it shouldn't take that many resources in order for us to have a version of it. So hey, these are the two games I want to see in VR on consoles. Number six. Yeah. Gordon Freeman. Let me get a look at you. Yes, that's right. What could be more exhilarating than playing Half-Life 2 in VR, or more specifically, Half-Life 2, Half-Life 2 Episode 1, and Half-Life 2 Episode 2. The right man in the wrong place can make all the difference in the world. I know some so of you might be thinking up, this is a long shot. After all, wait if wait Valve is going to come out with a VR version of Half-Life 2 in any kind of sense, they're probably going to use their own technology. They might only put it out on something like Steam. Striker, don't be a moron. But still, I really would like to see Half-Life 2 brought over to the consoles and put into VR. I mean, seriously, it took us a long time before we finally got a version of Half-Life 2 on PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. Hell, I remember actually playing through this game on the original Xbox. Yeah, that's before the even the one. Um, yeah, it was a pretty fun game, but seriously, since this game is so old, I can't imagine that it wouldn't run very smoothly, even being in VR. I mean, have some updated texture packs, of course, you know, polish a few things, but you know, you don't need to go to way extremes and completely redo character models or physics. But seriously, some of you guys have probably never played Half-Life 2, and you've probably gone all the way through high school and halfway through your college, and you still don't really know much about this game or have even experienced it. So why not let the first time you experience it be in VR? Oh, sure, you might know the memes and whatnot and all the fans that won't shut the hell up about when's episode three coming out or when we, we, will we finally get... Half-Life 3, yay! No, I mean, seriously, I think that this game would extremely benefit and be a really unique experience. No reason why it couldn't run really smooth, since it is a bit outdated in itself, but it's still an absolute great experience. And the whole game is told from the first person perspective anyway. Unlike some newer games like Deus Ex where, yeah, it's first person, but every time you take cover behind an object, well, then you see your person in third, in the third character. So yeah, everything takes place in first person. So I think this would work really, really well. It wouldn't take necessarily a whole lot of tinkering in order to get this thing to run. And seriously, the frantic action, the physics engine, the gravity gun, all of this would be extremely fun and extremely cool in VR, on consoles. Gabe Newell, just make it happen. Number five, Alien Isolation. Talk about a home run when it comes to the Alien franchise. Quite possibly the best Alien game Aside from maybe fond memories of Alien Trilogy on PlayStation or Alien Resurrection. But uh, but yeah, this is the seminal Alien game, especially after Alien Colonial Marines came out. Designed entirely from the first person perspective, even saving your game while avoiding the alien can be heart throbbing. You will hear your heart pounding out of your chest during some of these sequences. Of course, 
the game has already been available in VR, but not for consoles. So it would be kind of nice to see perhaps a, a slight reimagination to the controls and whatnot. I'm not quite sure what happens during cutscenes if the actors simply perform in front of the character and you never actually leave the uh, the first person perspective. But I really think that this is quite possibly a flagship title being able to play it in VR alongside obviously Resident Evil 7. If you could play Resident Evil 7 and then also play this on consoles, I think that would be pretty cool. And I think a lot of people that ignored this game uh, for what it was before, I think they would have a tremendous experience trying to play this game in VR with all the lights and the sounds and basically being completely cut off from the real world since, you know, the sound is being pumped into your ears and all you can see is the game world. Picking up ID cards, listening to audio tapes, I mean, all of it could work really well with the speakers from the game. There's just so many nice little touches in the game that lend itself very well to being in VR, which is probably kind of why it already exists on PC. But yeah, come on, let, let us have a console version of the VR. Uh, picking up items, just the simple, the dust and the smoke in the environments and oh my gosh, all those little noises that happened in the background while you're trying to do something, it will completely freak you out, especially if you have the surround sound from those headphones going off, you will be freaking yourself out quite a bit. I can just imagine some of the incredibly tense sequences in the game like when you're waiting for a, a tram or an elevator to show up and you know the alien is somewhere out there just around a corner the music itself is so spot on especially very well where you feel the tense nature that the game has been designed to give you it just works and especially when you know that that alien could possibly come at any moment. Oh, come on! I was just getting on the ride! I was looking for tools! Damn it! Great, great. I just pissed and shit myself. But damn it, I want to try it again. Let's go! Load up! Number four. Four. Grand Theft Auto 5. And along with that, of course, is also Grand Theft Auto Online since a lot of the activities are obviously shared, but we kind of want to be able to do this at least with a small handful of friends. You might have seen this game coming. After all, once it came to the uh, eighth generation consoles, Rockstar decided to include a first person mode, which could be initiated at any time and can also be used on the online multiplayer. Now on PC, apparently there is a mod that also initiated a VR type way. And some people have been complaining that it's, uh, it's a little nauseating because the game was probably never really meant for to be played in VR necessarily. But I mean, can you imagine running down the street, grabbing a shotgun, plugging a couple of cops, jumping into their squad car and going off in a high-speed chase. I mean, seriously, you probably would have a heart attack alone uh, being able to do that in real life, much less doing it like this in a game. No, you probably can't sip the coffee cup that the cops left behind, but I mean, you know, for a game that's already done and it already has a very vibrant world, with uh, police, emergency vehicles, buildings, flight mechanics, and all sorts of other stuff. Seriously, why not? Why not give us a console version or a console update? I mean, just imagine, I mean, motorcycles, dirt biking, cycling, parachuting, uh, not hang gliding, that's a different game. Um, but I mean, all the stuff that you've enjoyed in the game, all the years and years of constant content and updates and all of it would be there in VR. It'd be kind of cool and you know it might be a little janky at times since the game was probably never 
necessarily made for it, but uh, I think it could really work. And I think that even if it had to be a standalone release, I think a lot of people would buy another copy of Grand Theft Auto V, you know, for maybe $30, $40, in addition, I think people would do that if they could play one of their favorite and most expensive games in VR. Now let's take a minute, just sit right there, I'll tell you how I came up with the idea of honorable mentions. Soda Drinker Pro! That's right, what better game to have in VR than frickin' Soda Drinker Pro? Before we get to the top three, we're just gonna take a minute or two and uh, look through some of the games that are honorable mentions. These are games that, for some reason or another, didn't quite make it on my top 20 list. But I mean, come on, drinking a soda on top of a skyscraper. Who in the world? You would never be able to experience this for yourself. You would never, well, I could probably find a building downtown and then uh, buy a soda for five bucks. I could probably do this. But I mean, come on, you can't look off the side of the edge. They got those things that can't, okay, this game sucks. It blows, forget it. Moving on to the next game. So, so no soda drinker, but seven days to die. I really wanted to kind of include this game, but quite honestly, on PC, it's wonderful and it's terrific and it could probably use, yeah, you know, some help. But on console, this game is kind of a mess and the frame rate is really something that needs to be fixed. So that's why I can honestly say that even though I would like to see a game like Seven Days to Die, you know, with zombies and perhaps crafting and getting caught up in the whole zombie apocalypse happening, I can safely say that I don't want it to be this game, at least not the console version, or if anything, give us basically the PC version, stick it on PlayStation 4 Pro or, uh, or the Xbox VR, whatever you want to call it. Put it on that and maybe we can talk. Maybe I would play that game then. But yeah, this doesn't make it in the main list. The Long Dark, a game that I absolutely love, and there's actually some pretty good love for this thing on PC as well. Unfortunately, the console version of it, at least the one that's on Xbox One, I don't know about PlayStation 4, if, uh, if there's one there or not, but there's not much content to the game, there's no achievements or trophies yet, and there's no single player story, so... Sure, there's sandbox mode, there's also challenge mode and whatnot, but yeah, the game officially isn't kind of in its full retail release yet, so I didn't want to put a game that's essentially still an alpha that has no achievements or anything, <laughs> butt lover, but uh, yeah, so I really did want to put this game on there, and there's feats and stuff, but... We just don't know if all that stuff is going to translate into the final game or what ultimately is. But I mean, you know, going through vehicles and houses and grabbing flares and, and trying to survive in the cold and the shooting mechanics never really were that great to begin with. But I mean, hey, with this game, you could actually aim in first person. So having a VR version of The Long Dark is something I still would really like, but as far as this list and this year is concerned, 2017 is just a year I can't quite put this game on there because, at least in terms of a console release, it's just not finished yet. But I would love to look at this game again, maybe after Microsoft has announced their VR plan some more, and after Sony has a much better library. So we'll see. And then there was Resident Evil 4. But Stryker, that game's older than my balls. I mean, when when was I born? I'm a, I'm, if I'm a millennial, then yeah, after my balls. I know, but I mean, still, ultimately, this is a game that I would like to see. I mean, think about it. Leon basically plants his feet in the ground every time he aims to shoot. So that would actually kind of work well in a VR world where you basically have to stop and shoot anyway. I think it would be kind of cool and an interesting way to play the game. But for the most part, as far as we know, Capcom, they're probably not going to spend the money to do it. And this idea I had of playing this in VR kind of kept on getting pushed to the back of my list. So here it is in honorable mentions. 
and now we have Outlast. But Striker, what about Slenderman? That's my favorite. God damn it, Billy, shut up. The grown up is talking. Outlast and Outlast 2 quite possibly would probably be pretty good for this list. I couldn't quite bring myself to put it there because even after I extended my list from 15 to 20 different titles, I just still didn't have room for Outlast. It's a little bit older of a game, but I really would kind of like to see it, perhaps along with Amnesia as well. But they're older games and they might not translate as well to VR or, well, I mean, since they were basically not made for it, it would probably take a lot of twerking from the, <laughs> twerking, twerking from the original developers to make these kind of games work. But I'm all up for it, but it just didn't make it in my main list. Number three. Elder Scrolls V. That's right, the legendary Skyrim. And you might be wondering, well, Stryker, why not Oblivion? Why not Morrowind, you dumb son of a... Well, look, all the text in Morrowind would be kind of a chore to be put in front of you, and there's really only the spoken greetings by the characters. They'd have to really re-record an entire script for it. Oblivion is nice, to the block but uh, Skyrim's really where a lot of the mechanics come into play, and that opening scene alone, can you imagine having the VR goggles on and you have to walk forward, presumably to your own beheading, kneel down and put your head on the chopping block. That's something that most gamers probably have forgotten by now, but experiencing that in VR where you have to be the one to put your own head on the chopping block, even though it gets interrupted by the dragon, that's something that some gamers will probably never forget. And imagine gamers experiencing the game for the first time and having to go through this sequence. It's really incredible, and quite honestly, the dialogue and the quests and subquests, a lot of the systems and mechanics are just a lot better designed in Skyrim, and they work a lot better, and there's more variety. But I mean, can you imagine sitting down with, with uh, a pair of VR head-mounted display and, uh, and just reading a stack of books in-game, you know, by candlelight, perhaps, behind you with all you can hear is the candle, maybe the roar of a crackling fire if you're at your uh, one of your houses and whatnot, and uh, maybe a few ambient sounds besides that. I mean, just a very peaceful book reading evening, you know, even though nothing has changed about your location, you might not even have a candle to burn or incense or anything, but in the game, it just brings itself a whole new dimension to be able to sit down and read a book or look through the bars of a cell and see more stuff to grab. I mean, rotating items in the inventory, you know, now that actually happens right in front of your face so that you can actually see the things that you're about to put on your soldier. And having houses, being able to possibly uh, pick up items and put them a lot more precisely where you want. Sure, some of this stuff would need to have maybe some revamped uh, mechanics done to it in order to place items more precisely where you want, but that's something that they would work on. But I mean, just experiencing catacombs and, and uh, rooms only lit by torchlight and the vegetation and, and seeing the spectacular lighting and whatnot, it all really feels like this game is, is kind of made to do that. The smoke and the debris and the rubble and, and even just the dirtiness that the programmers have uh, and, the, and the designers that have put into these items. It just seems very fitting that Skyrim would be a game a lot better suited than Oblivion and perhaps even Morrowind. I mean, even taking out an enemy with one of the executions, I mean, you actually look into their cold, dead eyes as you finish them off. Uh, of course, there's still clipping issues and other things that you'd have to get over, but I mean, just coming across enemies for the first time in VR, it's going to kind of freak you out. I mean, giant spiders, you know, giant golems and, and, and orcs and whatnot. I mean, you might feel the need to actually just turn around and run, even though in the game you've probably slaughtered hundreds, if not thousands of these creatures, but seeing them, you know, in first person where your viewpoint can only see them with no escape, I think it would be quite exhilarating. 
to experience Skyrim, uh, not to mention just an RPG this deep with the systems in place. And yeah, I mean, seriously, the, the outside beauty, the, the trees, the bark, the leaves, there's been enough mods throughout the years to really up the graphical detail to this game, not to mention the Skyrim Special Edition. Uh, of course, PC users, you've always had the Special Edition because you've always had the upgraded stuff. But seriously, Skyrim just has a better combat system, uh, better magic use. Anything that it's missing from Oblivion or even perhaps Morrowind or just systems like the, the whole fencing goods, it just works better in Skyrim. And I really can't imagine a better game than to play an Elder Scrolls game in VR. Number two. Bethesda again, huh? Well, we already had Skyrim, right? What in the world could this be? Ah, yes. Fallout 4. I initially kind of wanted to put Fallout New Vegas in here. Um, since it has the more dynamic story, I guess you could argue, that has changes and whatnot. It's got the hunger thing in place. I also thought about Fallout 3 and uh you know having all the companions and whatnot but quite honestly the, it kind of suffers from well the newness of it all in fallout 4 there's just my great great much better designed items and whatnot and i mean can you imagine being in this world in 3d seeing the shrubbery and the roots of trees and stuff growing on the sides of buildings looking at the old monuments and the destroy well once the uh, textures load in of course but looking at the uh the destroyed monuments of old with all the rendered bird poop and stuff on it as you could see going inside of vehicles looking in the back of trucks you know peeking inside things to pick up more things there might actually need to be a, a small change in order to have more things to actually pick up and, and notice inside other containers and whatnot but uh, but yeah i think i really think fallout 4 just does a much better job of presenting this post-apocalyptic world uh than new vegas and fallout 3 and the fact is is that since this has already been designed with the htc uh vive in mind it should be relatively easy to bring to a console uh otherwise fallout 3 and New Vegas, you'd have to think about possibly doing a uh, a 4K texture pack or something else in addition to making it work. But Bethesda's already done the work. They've already done the work for the HTC Vive in order to make it work with that. So bringing this to consoles should almost be second nature, quite honestly. But I mean, the, the combat, you know, slowing down time, aiming at things, you know, being able to see that inside of a head-mounted display, that would be kind of cool. And sure, the camera can still even do its cinematic stuff if you want, or you can decide to turn it off. All the base building stuff that some players possibly skip the first time, you know what? Doing that in 3D, that might be kind of cool. Uh, but I mean, yeah, the game mechanics, the damage models, it's all better in Fallout 4. And I really think it's just much better suited than having to upgrade older games. And, uh, and quite honestly, I mean, the, the vistas, all the detail in the environments that's already there, the relationship with the characters, I really can't imagine a better way of experiencing a Fallout game than in VR. It just, the whole VAT system seems like it's tailor-made for you being able to pause the action and aim at enemies. It just works great. Number one. So what else could there possibly be but Minecraft? I mean, seriously. It might not necessarily be that big of a surprise, but I mean, experiencing all the updates, all the different content, the different biomes, the stained glass, riding horses, uh, shearing sheep, having your dog follow you around. It all is just heightened to the extreme 
when your entire vision is engrossed inside that head-mounted display and you're in VR. I mean, sure, creative mode, you can fly around, you can look at stuff, but I mean, you can still open all the doors and go down passageways and ride mine carts. Doing it from a first-person perspective is quite possibly one of the most engrossing experiences that could ever happen in VR, despite the looks. I mean, milking cows and and even just talking to the animals, you know, it, it feels like you would be moving around in these gigantic environments. Hopefully, instead of pushing the A button to jump, that doesn't mean that we're gonna need to have to jump in real life every time we wanna move up a block. But still, this game, quite possibly could be very tailor-made to work in VR. I know a while back Notch expressed his uh, reasons for quite possibly never including VR with Minecraft because of some business reasons, but, uh, but he's not part of the Mojang team anymore and Microsoft now owns that company. So quite honestly, this could be something that actually happens a lot sooner than we were all thinking before. And remember, Oculus and the HTC Vive, they both basically run on Windows, so it would be incredibly easy for Microsoft to bring the game over, especially to Xbox, and to be the only place to play in VR with Minecraft. Lots of games have tried to imitate Minecraft and its absurd amount of content, add-on packs, character packs, but Minecraft is the place to go. Thanks for watching. This is Striker Avenue.